Okay, so we're here with uh, Jessica Stewart of the band Jessica Stewart Few, and she has a number of uh, festival appearances coming up in Toronto. If you want to let people know first about which ones you have coming up and what dates and where. Awesome. Um, so in this next week and a half, we're playing at the Great Heart Festival, which is in Trinity Bellwoods Park. Uh, it's a totally acoustic, unplugged, uh, free festival, and people sit on the hill and and shut up and listen to people playing music, and that should be really fun. That's Thursday, June 18th at 4 p.m. I think we actually kick off the festival then, so that's kind of fun. And then um, we're playing that same night at 1 a.m. at the Cameron House as part of North by Northeast. And then we'll also be playing on Saturday afternoon as part of North by Northeast at 3 p.m. in St. James Park, which is in St. Lawrence Market. And uh, that one's both those North by shows are fully plugged in and rocking out sort of shows with the four member version of the band. And then we sort of wrap up our Toronto festivals um, with the Toronto Jazz Festival and we're playing at Musidium and that's Thursday the 25th of June and it's a two set gig, it'll be a trio, our, our trio lineup and uh, we'll be playing lots of interesting unexpected things. So with all the festival appearances, how are you booking these? Are, are these application festival dates or people coming to you or is it a mix of both? Yeah, well, it's actually sort of a mix of both. Definitely when you're just starting out, there's always you're always applying for things or trying to, you know, you're always making the motions to be involved at these festivals and stuff. But um, as time goes on, people also get in touch with us, which is really cool. Like, for instance, um, uh, this summer we're playing some festivals out west, and one of them I didn't apply for, they called me, and it was very cool uh, and surprising because, it, you know, it's, it's always a, a hustle to get to, to become chosen even if they like your music it doesn't mean that you're going to fit with their lineup or they're going to not already have uh, obligations or fill their slots or or whatever the case may be um, so with say North by uh, North by I applied for but the second North by gig they approached me the St. Lawrence Market BIA people and um sort of a conversation with Musidium about being part of their Toronto Jazz Fest lineup because we're suitable since they're uh, for an instrument store and museum so we sort of fit back into the Koto and do jazzish music so and then Great Heart they contacted me so it's sort of a mix and that's very awesome. Uh, and with the different festivals and the different stage sizes and everything, uh, do you have a preference for which ones you lo you like to do, or, or do you kind of just arrange sets according to the stage size, and that's how you go about it? Well, it depends. I mean, it's kind of cool because since we're not like a straight up rock band and we're not a straight up folk band, we're not a straight up jazz band. We sort of have uh, sort of influence from all of those different things in our music, so that means that we could choose to sort of interpret our tunes uh, in one way or the other, as the case may be. Like, say for the Great Heart Festival uh, on Thursday, like that's fully unamplified and acoustic, no, no sound equipment to be seen. And we can do that by, instead of playing electric guitar, which I usually do in the band, playing acoustic guitar. And the koto is acoustic, the double bass is acoustic, drums can be done acoustically, they just have to play, be played quietly, and then we sing. So that's done deal, but then, you know, playing maybe the North by set at, at uh, either of the North by Northeast sets that we're playing, those are sort of more about rocking out. It's kind of like a more hypey, sort of less of a just straight up listening audience, more of a like, in, you know, moving around audience, standing audience, right? So we can plug in and rock out like that. And, you know, if we play at Jazz Fest, maybe we'll open up some of the tunes and take longer solos than we would at a folk festival because we can. And that's a, that's a thing which Jazz Fest audiences enjoy is improvising. And a lot of jazz is based around improvising improvised sections so so we can sort of extend those and just do do what we feel from within our repertoire like we have probably about 25 to 30 songs in that we play on a regular basis and then another 10 or more maybe that are out of rotation but we could play if we need to like for instance um, when I played a show with my mom 
last summer at Harbfront Center for the first time when my mom played with my band. I wrote this piece for two kotos and band, but then also I didn't want her to just play this one song with us. She was being flown out from Vancouver to play with us at Harbourfront Center, so I wanted to make use of her presence, so I sort of rehashed or rearranged this uh, instrumental tune, which was formerly for koto violin, bass and drums, uh, and voice from the first record, Kid Dream, and I sort of rearranged that for two kotos so that we could do that together. And that's a tune that we never otherwise play because I don't really do instrumental stuff with this band and this the, the way that the band is now. But in the beginning, I hadn't made that decision yet. So so yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff to choose from and we can sort of switch it up as we feel. So that's kind of nice. Keeps it interesting. And as far as the actual um, changes in the types of songs and the, the genre you play in, uh, I know with some festivals, you have to apply under a certain genre. Sure. And does that become a difficulty for you with uh, the changes in what you do? Things first, just because, you know, in case there's people who are watching this interview who don't know anything about my music yet, um, it's, it's, it's really like, as opposed to it being like, you know, there's one song of one genre and another song of another genre, it's just that the way that I hear music isn't restricted to those sort of typical categories, so it becomes a stew of all of these things together. So it really is sort of homogenous in its own way. Like, it sounds like me, you know, um, whether it's an upbeat song or a, a slow song or a whatever, um, and, you know, some person might be like, oh, that reminds me of, like, Zeppelin and someone else might be like, oh, that part reminds me of Stereo Lab, but it's all still part of the same thing. So, yeah, it, you know, people applying for the different festivals, they're obviously looking for different things. So I just try to give them from my material what they want. And then when we get booked for the festival, we do exactly what we want. And no one's ever complained. <laughs> so that's what we do. Okay. And so you had a number of uh, appearances overseas in Australia and in Japan. Yeah. So do you find that audiences react to the same songs differently in the different countries? Generally speaking, audiences in Japan, um, more than anywhere else we've been, really uh, sort of have reverence for people who do music or arts for a living. So there's a certain kind of respect that you get. And just in general, there's sort of like, it's slightly more of a respectful <laughs> culture than ours, I think. Um, so there's much different reaction in that way, and uh, I was I was saying to another interviewer earlier today that whereas if there's a hundred people at a 200 person venue in Canada, we'll be around the perimeter of the room with a big space in front of the stage, and that's how people will watch the show. And in Japan, everyone will push up against the front of the stage and will act as though it's a sold out show. Like they just behave, they go flock towards the music and totally engaged and shut up and don't talk during the thing and yeah so it's very different like that and each yeah there's different perceptions everywhere like um, in Canada the word jazz is actually sort of like a bad word or, or people have a very narrow idea of what jazz is or what jazz means and they think that's some archaic music form that maybe their grandparents like or their parents put on when they're having dinner guests over or something like that um, but in places like Australia, the word jazz is actually very appealing. And um, I was, you know, looking at this house concerts website to fill in some of the dates in between festivals and club shows when, before we were going out there. And uh, people were listing what kind of genres they were open to for their house concerts. And here it's predominantly folk and bluegrass and country and maybe classical for house concerts and things and there along with those la other genre labels was jazz on almost every single person's house concert venue profile so they were like totally open to they were like oh yeah jazz sounds great bring your jazz over here <laughs> uh, and as far as albums with there's a new one coming out what can you tell us about the new one just finished recording, like tracking everything on Friday. Um, it feels like it's been a long time that we've been recording, but I guess it really hasn't been. It's just that we had several months off in between from the beginning, our first session recording the trio live off the floor in August and now. So, but it's actually nine months, so it feels like I'm about to give birth. And <laughs> I'm just ready for it to be done. Just gotta mix some stuff decide on which tunes are going to make it to the album because we have 15 but we'll probably have you know 11 or 13 11 to 13 on the actual album 
and uh, it's just it was really 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 a great process um, and there was this cool it's like you always hope that every album sort of evolves in uh, in some way you know and, and becomes better than the previous which you probably thought was as good as it gets right um, and I definitely feel that that's the case and and with this album there is you know some very deeply connected emotional sort of moments in the studio and um, it's just nice because at this point with the amount of recording that uh, that we've done it's just I don't think about the studio-ness of being in the studio anymore it's just really about about telling the story of each song and conveying the sentiment uh, both through the music and then also through the words so um, so yeah, there's some tear-jerking moments for me anyway with the with the album because it's all mining through some like super personal and real kind of emotions. Uh, but that being said, I mean, uh, a friend of mine put it really well when we were talking about songwriting and 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 said, you know, I've always been nervous to share the words of my songs in a way because it's so personal and it's so people see it as autobiographical and, and it is to a point but at the same time what my my music my singer songwriter and other otherwise great musician friends said was that it's like it starts with the real emotional emotionally connected sort of thought that and thing that you're trying to convey and then the writing takes on the narrative it needs to to complete the song right so it's like it starts with from a real place and it's not that it's a lie it's just it takes on its own life and sometimes it follows the way that the lyric go is goes isn't exactly like the reality of the full story you know it might just be a spin on a real thing that happened to you or that you thought or that you feel um, so it's um, it's both very personal and also sort of like I guess in that way kind of universal it just sort of follows the path it needs to and is its own thing as well as being a part of you know my soul being spared to the world and as far as other things happening musically uh, aside from the festivals aside from shows aside from uh, the album uh, what else is there happening musically are, are you expanding out uh, social media are you expanding out into uh, grant applications are you expanding out into other things you know we're gonna be doing a bunch of touring of the new album so that's like that musical thing related to that to that album of course and then we want to try to do some more collaborative stuff so like more music videos with like animators and filmmakers and artists and um, I'm always keen to do stuff with like like multimedia stuff, live painting at shows and stuff is something we've done a bunch or, or a, an ins inspiration uh, exchange like I do with the artist Takashi Iwasaki who did art for our last album and is doing a custom design for our new album and um, where we send each other stuff and then make art or music respectively and then show each other it and uh, keep getting inspired from that or doing stuff with like people who move their bodies beautifully, dancers and uh, other thing, other people, photographers. So that sort of thing would be fun. And then, I mean, I the nice thing is that like since I do music for my full-time job, I play with a lot of other bands too and that's really fun and I get to do totally different kinds of music with those types of bands and use different sort of skills in my wheelhouse for those things. So. It's never boring. So even when it seems like there's nothing going on with maybe the Jessica Stewart view every once in a while or we're in between things, there's always a bunch of things going on with other bands. So never a dull moment. If fans want to connect with you, how do they connect with you? And if fans want to connect with you, how do they connect with you? Sorry, fans? Uh, fans. 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 Yeah. Um, well, we've got like a bunch um, of well, we've got, like, stuff bunch going of on online. Like stuff everyone does. We have a, a website of our own. A website of the Jessica Stewart view dot com. com. Uh, we have uh, Facebook page have Facebook slash page. Jessica Stewart view. We have Twitter. We have at Twitter just at Stewart just view. We have Instagram. That one's one I keep up with quite a lot, actually. And that's really behind the scenes and stuff. And that's the Justice Stewart view. And then uh, we've got a YouTube channel and lots of other stuff. So we have uh, a lot of ways. I mean, I have a postcard. I'm going to show you with the camera. The camera has some of the gigs on it. Has some of the gigs on it. So I don't know. You have to focus on there is where there's a bunch of. There is where there's a bunch of.
Got it? Got it? Okay, and finally, uh, for the Toronto appearances coming up, what uh, what drinks can people buy your band? <laughs> I think that Jocelyn would probably be into... I'm not sure what she's into right now. I feel like, well, I like gin, gin and soda or white wine. That would that will work. But basically, you know, if you want to buy me a shot of whiskey, I'm super happy with that.